Another type of map we might want to use in step three is called the research map. It seeks to visualize the research process from beginning to end. By doing this upfront, we can save ourselves a lot of time later in the research process. Like the system map, the research map helps us identify the various components of the problem and then identify the relevant disciplines. Let's take a look at the key components of a research map by looking at the textbooks example. In this figure from the textbook, we can see that a research map usually includes the purpose of the research, a list of potentially relevant disciplines, an explanation of each discipline's perspective on the problem, and an explanation of each discipline's assumptions about the problem. And the map also includes non-disciplinary sources, like people who experience the problem in real life. We can interview them to learn more about the problem. Although they are not considered peer-reviewed sources, they certainly have a perspective on the problem that interdisciplinarians cannot ignore. 